Hello everyone and welcome to my newest tutorial. Today we're going to be working on this adorable mouse and daffodils. We're going to be using soft pastels, specifically the Carinda Ash pastel pencils with a couple of Stabilo Carvathellos thrown in there towards the end. We're going to be working on the Clairefontaine pastel mat in white and the photograph is from photographer Brian White. So let's jump in there and do this. Now, with a piece like this and working on such a small area in pastels, I prefer to work from the back to the front. This might mean using the darkest colours first, but I'm trying to retain those areas that I'm going to have in the foreground so that I can have them as crisp and bright as possible. So I'm working on the stems and the back of the flowers before I do anything else. This is really going to give me my darkest areas as well so I can work out my scale of contrast and what to use. So I block in the shadows first. It's helping me create a road map so that I know where I'm going to be working. I'm not paying too much attention to the overall detail, more to shape and form than anything else. The colours I'm picking at a whim. I'm not being specific, I'm looking, I'm seeing and I'm choosing what is close and mixing whatever I don't have at hand. I add some yellow in here because it's reflected through the actual petals. So you get that colour that sort of reverberates around on the rest of the image and it ties everything in together. Again, I'm not working in too much detail, I'm just looking at my reference, I'm picking out what's the darkest areas, what's the lightest areas and I'm working to tie it all in together. Now working with yellow is hard. Yellow is one of those colours where it's super impossible to get proper levels of contrast, it's really difficult to create actual form and interest in the shapes that you're trying to render. It's not the yellow is a bad colour, it just really struggles to portray any of its depth through photos and imagery. So I used a mixture of some pretty dark ochre yellows tied in with green which creates a range of tones that are cool and warm. I use these for my shadow areas which really helped to bump up the contrast so that I could really get the shape and the realistic form of the petals happening. I didn't want my highlights to be anywhere near white so I used some uh, cream tones instead and if I did use white it was only to glaze over areas where I'd gone far too dark or too vibrant and I needed to bring those back to a less saturated tone. This work itself is not complex. I didn't go into great detail with anything but I did pay attention to things like the direction within petals. You've got lines in the petal themselves which arch from the center of the flower outwards and I use my darkest colors underneath my layers so that they would shine through to the top and give the illusion of some detail. I didn't go in there and draw every line specifically. I just lined them in there in the way that I thought they should go and we rolled from there. You can see me working back and forwards over and over again with the same similar set of colors just rendering and re-rendering the same pieces. It looks more less complex because of how sped up the video is but really you're just going back over the same areas again and again. You're detailing, then you're glazing, then you're smoothing, then you're detailing again, glazing, smoothing. It's a process but if you stick to a pretty limited range of colors that give you a wide range then you really expand what you can achieve. It also helps your pieces to be remain united across the whole of the work. You're not throwing in random colours that have no place or belonging. And 
once you find something that works, sort of stick to it. I mean, you see me here again using the dark ochre tone mixed with the green to really create that depth and shadow. I'm not using any actually dark colours. I'm just using a colour theory that when you blend red and you blend green, you end up with a disgusting brown colour, which is much darker than both of them. In as you learn your colour theory, you can expand on what you will and will not be able to achieve. The more that you practice and learn and experiment, the better you're going to get. Push your tools to the brink of what you think you can or cannot achieve. Because that's the only way to learn. You can watch as many tutorials, read as many books as you like, and they can help. But the more work that you put in, the more time that you spend experimenting and trialing new things, that's what's going to teach you the most. Some of us really struggle to teach because we're trying to condense hours and years of things that we've learned and practiced and dedicated our time to into a few minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, even four hour long live streams. There's no way that we can possibly impart all our knowledge to you because we don't know it ourselves. A lot of things we do on instinct, we've just spent so much time doing things that they become second nature. Now you can see again as we work on the core of these flowers, I'm not getting into huge amounts of details. I'm rendering the important areas, I'm rendering them as dark as they need to be and as light as they need to be and that creates the form and shadow and it gives you illusion of detail. I'm not getting bogged down trying to draw every little vein or granulated piece or little burr or little shape. I'm using my colours and the contrasts and gradients to really create something that feels alive. But it's not. It's a 2D image. You're never going to be able to get it perfect. You can't reach out and touch it. I mean, you could, but you're going to ruin it. So we use our light and we use form and colour and it creates something that's beautiful. I hope that what I'm trying to impart to you makes some sort of sense. If you have questions or queries or you want some more expansion or something, then put a comment down below and I'll approach it as best I can. Don't ask me what colours I use because honestly, I don't know. I pick colours. I pick them on a whim and I utilise them as I see fit. It's not something that goes through my brain to consciously think, oh, this should be exactly this colour and nothing else because everything is a mix of two or three or four or five or a dozen colours it's not one colour it's many and you blend and you alternate and it might not work right but you've done it now so you commit to it and you just make some changes and tweaks so this mouse is gosh darn adorable with pastels one of the most effective ways to work is to render things with your darks first and then come back with your highlighting over the top. That means working very lightly though because you don't want to crush the tooth of your paper but you also don't want to overfill it as you're working. Now <laughs> I had broken the lead in this pencil but it's the last one of these that I have left. I need to order more. So I was working very carefully with a very wobbly core in this pencil. So it took me ages. And actually slowing down and working very gently with it as I had to. Otherwise it was just going to break on me. Improved on the way that I was working. So it gave me more, it made me more conscious of what I was doing, how I was working, how to be most effective, and it reminded me to be gentle and to be top soft. I work very hard sometimes. I can seriously damage paper, I can really get myself into some tight spots 
just by going in too hard, too fast, and pretty much ruining works before I get anywhere. So slowing down, taking your time, and being gentle and caressing the work into being can make such a difference. So I went with my next darkest colour, and you can see it building into a fairly solid form in the fur. But it doesn't look like fur. It's very dark. I blended it out with one of these sponges just to get it a little bit more smooth. And that was particularly because of the white paper. It was quite difficult to cover all of the grain without going in very hard and using a whole lot of pencils. So using something that will help you blend will smooth it out and you'll get where you're going a lot faster. I like to use a wide variety of colours, particularly some fairly vibrant tones in fur. And this is a pencil that I've been using on the flowers, so it ties everything in together and creates that piece, that sense of unity across the entire work. Creating variation in the fur is super important. Now I use the Faber-Castell soft white pencils to actually render in the final detail hairs over the top in the highlights. It's a soft pencil but it holds a very pointy core very easily. And I can just throw it in my electric sharpener and sharpen it up again whenever I want to. So I do the same with the black pencil because I really want those fine hairs. The Carinda Ash pencils are a little thick too thick to fit in my sharpener so I'm very impatient and can't be bothered sharpening them all the time with a sandpaper and a blade so I go back to what is easy. Blue in the eye creates that sense of the orb and then we just begin tying everything in together and you finalize a piece and it's done and that's really all there is to it. You can keep touching and playing and adjusting areas, but at some point you have to call it done. And this was my point. Done. And this whole piece probably took me about two hours, so it's not a complex work, but it's something else. I really enjoyed this piece. There's a little bit of detail, but mostly it's just simplicity and adorableness <laughs> and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video I really appreciate the support thank you